With minutes to go in the FA Cup final the fearless goalie dived at the striker's feet to make a wonder save. Keeper Bert Trotman suffered a serious injury in the clash but played on to ensure his side's victory. There was a noticeable crook in his neck when he collected his winner's medal. An X-ray would later reveal he had broken his neck. Bert's bravery elevated international hero status and won him a permanent place in football folklore. His courageous part in Manchester City's 3-1 win against Birmingham City at Wembley in 1956 would have been unthinkable just 11 years earlier. For back then Trotman had been an enemy, a German prisoner of war in Britain. Yet he overcame ill feelings against Germans to become a sporting legend in his adopted land. Now his remarkable life has been turned into the film The Keeper, already in cinemas. Bert is played by German actor David Cross, who shot to fame in 2008 opposite Kate Winslet in The Reader. Bert, born in Bremen, Germany, was a paratrooper with the Luftwaffe in the Second World War, serving on the Eastern Front. He was awarded the Iron Cross First Class for bravery in battle. Transferred to the Western Front, he was captured by Allied troops. After several escapes he was sent to a POW camp in Ashton in Makerfield, Lanks, where he played goalkeeper for the first time. His amazing skills were spotted by Jack Fryer, manager of St. Helens Town, who signed him. Bert would go on to marry Jack's daughter Margaret and turn down repatriation to stay in this country with his bride. When Bert was signed for Manchester City in 1949, 20,000 fans protested outside the stadium and threatened to boycott the club. But the city learned to accept the crowd who played more than 500 times for the club, including the cup final, where he dislocated five vertebrae in his neck saving a goal. His son Mark Trotman is pleased younger football fans will learn of Bert's achievements through the film. To Mark he will always just be dad. The man he kicked a ball with in the garden, who took the family on holidays in Anglesey and to watch the local football team. The film was also very emotional for Mark, who lost Bert to a heart attack in 2013, aged 89. He said, there was a moment where Cross raises his hands. I was seeing dad and his mannerisms. Cross had copied old footage of Bert. Mark said, it was incredible. The film made me think of the impact he had on the world. And I'd like to think dad will still have an impact on young aspiring footballers in years to come.
when you live with it, you don't feel the enormity of his achievements. But he did go through a hell of a lot. Mark was born in 1961, five years after Burt's FA Cup victory. His memories of his dad are not of the cheering crowds at City's then stadium in Main Road or of Burt's brilliant goalkeeping. Instead he fondly recalls playing football with Bert and brother Stephen, now 61, at the home in Hazel Grove, near Stockport, Christmases at their grandparents in St Helens, Merseyside, and six-week caravan holidays on the Welsh coast. Bert joined them for the two weeks he was allowed off from training. Mark, a civil servant now living in East Anglia, said, they were wonderful summers. Football was always a part of our lives. But I don't think the footballing gene fell to my brother and me. Family life was also never interrupted by Bert's fame. He was a modest man who lived by modest means. He didn't live a lavish life as he didn't have the money, said Mark who has two children of his own, Richard, 31 and Emma, 28. He said, footballers in the 50s and 60s weren't paid anything close to what they are nowadays. In 1956 he was paid about £11 a week for the season, then £8 a week off-season, and only £12. <music> 50 for the FA Cup final. He even had to sell his Footballer of the Year trophy. But among all the happy family life and football memories, Bert's life was marred by tragedy. John, his firstborn son, was killed in a car accident only months after the cup final. It was a personal tragedy that left a deep emotional scar on Bert and Margaret, later leading to their separation in 1972. Mark who was 10 when they divorced, said my mother never got over the loss of John. His death caused the crack in their relationship that became the catalyst for their split. Dad was certainly affected by it, but men kept their emotions inside in those days. The horrendous atrocities that he must have seen fighting on the Eastern Front and in the war must have hardened him. So when John died it must have been something that added to his psyche. He dealt with it his way and never talked about it or the war. Mark was touched to see his parents' wedded bliss before this awful tragedy brought to life by director Marcus H. Rosenmuller in The Keeper. He said, it's nice to see that before the death of John, they had a happy life together. That was what Mark chose to remember when he scattered his ashes in October 2013 on what would have been Bert's 90th birthday. The family had arranged to go and visit Bert and his German wife Marlis at their home in Valencia, Spain, where they moved together in the mid-80s. But Bert was struck down by a heart attack in July that year. 
shortly after that a second cardiac claimed his life. Marx said, we scattered his ashes at his bungalow in Spain. It was a very moving occasion. It's a shame he didn't survive to see the film. But his legacy lives on.